Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Doctor Who action figure review. For today's review I shall be taking a look at the Unit 1971 set which contains three of the icons from the 1970s of Doctor Who. We have another release of our favourite Brigadier, Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge-Stewart along with some of his comrades. For the first time ever in action figure form, we have Sergeant John Benton and Captain Mike Yates. So now I'm just going to show you the packaging. Once again, the packaging is something what we've come to expect now with these B&M figures. So here we have the window box display with the three figures inside, with the Doctor Who logo, with the TARDIS. Obviously, you've got the figures at the back. It tells you what the figures are in this set. Interestingly enough, in this set, it says that it includes the Brigadier, Captain Mike Yates, and Sergeant John Benton. I don't ever remember uh, Benton ever being called John Benton, but I guess that may be his name. And on to Brigadier. All three of these figures are based on these characters' appearances in the 1971 story, The Claws of Axos. This is a story which has been already covered by character options through various figure releases through the years. We had a Claws of Axos set with the Master and an Axon, and we also had another one which contained the Brigadier, Joe Grant, and the Axon humanoid figures, which I've reviewed just a few weeks ago, so shameless plug. If you haven't checked that review out, then please do so. I'll put the link at the top of the screen now. This figure is basically a repaint of the figure which came in that set. It's the same Brigadier because obviously there's not much more you can do, but there are some slight differences to the figure. First thing I can tell you straight away is this is the second time we've had a Brigadier in the BNM line. A couple of years ago he was released as part of the 1970s set which was based on his appearances like in his earlier stories like from the 60s and like season 7 and on that figure there was a bit less detail in the face. It looked sort of expressionless uh, to effect he sort of looked dead, and the unit badge, things like that, it was very, very lacking in the detail department. I'm happy to report that all three of these figures are very highly detailed. This one even has rosy cheeks. They've given, like, a darker sort of skin tone, and I don't know what to think about the rosy cheeks, but what I will say is, in hand... It looks absolutely amazing. You can see like more of the wrinkles on the forehead and everything. And it is a very good likeness to Nicholas Courtney. And obviously you've got the unit badge at the top, which is very nice. And you've got the creases in the beret. Um, all of the berets and everything, it's part of the head sculpt. But they're all sculpted like individually on each of these three figures in this set, which is very nice. We look at the rest of the body, he's obviously wearing his green army gear and obviously you got like patches on the back and then just going at the belt you've still got the gold buckles, you've got the holster where he holds his gun, obviously you got more of the fasteners there at the front and his trousers I will say they look a little bit weird and his shoes are just painted black and he has brown gloves now. Uh, yeah, his trousers look a little bit weird. They've been pe painted green, but there's like little washes of black in there. I'm not sure why they've done that. Whether it's to give the impression that they're creased, maybe. Not so sure. Uh, it doesn't look terrible, but it looks a little bit strange. So, now... We're going to do a comparison. Oh yeah, and he also comes with his gun, like uh, most other Brigadier figures that have been released through the years. But now, let's do a comparison of this with the original. And you know, you can see that it's not just a simple re-release. As I said, the gloves are different. The original one had black gloves. The beret is painted differently, and the shoulder pads are painted differently. Collar looks the same jacket looks the same, trousers 
are like the most notable difference. Uh, these ones are like a lighter green, whereas this one is darker green with the weird black wash, as I mentioned. And obviously, this one's wearing brown shoes, this one is wearing black shoes. Don't know which one is more accurate to how he looks on screen. I have no idea. And if I'm going to be honest with you, there's a few things which are better and worse about the new version. I think that the head sculpt is absolutely amazing, but it's always been amazing in my opinion. Apart from the 1970s uh, set that I mentioned before. Uh, and paint applications are very, very good on a new one. I think that the old one, so this one, it had better trousers than this one. But apart from that, I think that this new Brigadier is very good. And if you missed out on that original clause of Axos Brigadier, then I definitely think this really fills in that gap in for you. Now on to Sergeant Benton, a figure which many of us again thought would never ever happen. Many of us have been clamouring for a figure like this for many years or even just a standard unit soldier and now here in 2020, the year of Covid, the horrible year which everyone wants to forget, this year will be remembered for the year in which Sergeant Benton played by John Levine, got his own action figure. And I've got to say, this is probably my favourite figure from this set. Just looking at the detail of the face, it is an absolute dead ringer for John Levine. Character options have really gone above and beyond here. It's so, so good. Just everything, like with the eyebrows and just the cheeks and the eyes. I can tell who this is meant to be. Uh, his beret has been sculpted on. As I mentioned earlier, each one has different sculpts, so there's different creases here and there on the parts of the, the beret, which is very good. They've not just reused the same one, so it's very good that they've done that. Now, going on to the actual jacket, this is actually a Three Doctors Brigadier, which has been reused here for the torso but they've added a few things here and there they've added like these packages on the braces here for like all of the equipment that uh, Benton would be using like he had walkie talkies and that type of thing to contact the brigadier and I've got to say that it's very nicely sculpted the main body is painted in like a light green so I think it's very fitting, it looks like he's part of the army. He's got the unit insignia there at the bicep and obviously you still have the unit insignia badge on the uh, beret. He's got the three arrows there which indicate that he is a sergeant. And going at the trousers, again like the brigadier in this set, they're painted green. However, I think these trousers look a little bit better than the Brigadier's ones because I think that Brigadier one, the trousers on that, look a little bit weird but aside from that it's still a good figure and under here he has his little necktie. Overall the detail on this guy is very good and I forgot to talk about the articulation on the other Brigadier in this set but the articulation on all of these are pretty much the same so I'll just go for it on this figure as the next figure has exactly the same articulation. So head can move side to side on this one. Shoulders can move out to the side, they're ball jointed. There's articulation in the biceps, in the elbows and the 360 in the wrist. Legs can move up and down, side to side. Waist can do a 360, thighs can do a 360 and the knees can bend. And that is your articulation on Benton. Uh, before we move on, I'll quickly talk about the accessory which comes with this along with Mike Yates. And it is the infamous machine gun, which is inaccurate. Um, I've got to be blunt with you. It does not represent any sort of machine gun, 
which any of these characters use in the series as this is meant to be like something from the 21st century I believe but you know what I'm just gonna let it slide I think it looks quite cool having these type of uh, accessories for these figures because we've never had this before and I think they look quite cool on the shelf. I will say that posing these guys with machine guns can be a little bit hard work because sometimes they do want to fall over so just be wary of that when you're trying to do things like that with these figures. I say that's my only minor gripe with this figure and the Mike Yates figure because otherwise this is excellent. Now on to Mike Yates and as I said the articulation is exactly the same and the body almost looks exactly the same as the Sergeant and Benton figure as well. So I'm not going to go on too much about this. Uh, like he doesn't have the arrows on his arm there because this guy is just the captain. Uh, obviously most of the detail which can be found on the Benton figure is still present. He's still got these... Uh, packages here. It would have been very cool if we got a walkie-talkie accessory, but I'm fine with these guns. Um, looking at the detail of the face, when I first saw the pictures of the sets, like when they initially leaked, I wasn't so sure if this was going to be just like a standard unit soldier. I knew we were getting Sergeant Benton, I could tell straight away because John Levine, you know, he had he has like one of those distinctive faces you can tell who it's meant to be um, when I saw that this was going to be Mike Yates I wasn't so sure about the likeness but actually having this out of the box because uh, even in the box I wasn't so sure but out of the box looking at him now looking at him on camera and in real life this is a pretty good likeness to uh, Richard Franklin I'd say that it's not as good as the uh, John Levine likeness for Mike, um, Mike Yates, uh, Sergeant Benton, but I think that this makes for another good figure, and this finally completes the unit family. I think that this is a good face sculpt and represents the on screen appearance of Mike Yates. So, very exciting to have this figure alongside our Benton figure it is just amazing that we've even got these guys and as I said these can be a pain in the ass to stand up in this collection so uh, just be wary of that like when you're posing with these guns it's mainly like when you're trying to pose them with these guns because other than that these guys they look the part, you can tell that the part of units elite. What I would really love now is if we got more versions of these characters. I'd be very open to more releases of the Brigadier, whether we've had those variants before or not had those variants before, because I always love me another Brigadier figure. And as I said, I'd love more Benton figures and more Yates figures. and. I'm going to be putting it out there, seeing as character options are now making these new head sculpts for characters that we've never had in the line before. Do some other unit soldiers. They don't have to be based on any particular characters from any of the unit stories, but you know, you could just have some standard unit soldiers. That way you could... <laughs> I just realise I'm, I'm making a pun here. You could army build, because you know the part of the army. Yeah, I know, I'm a terrible joker. Thank you very much for watching this action figure review, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this as much as I have really enjoyed reviewing this for you. This is easily one of the best sets to come out this year. I'd say it's my personal second favourite set after the Companions of the Fourth Doctor set. If you haven't already, check out that review. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more videos by me, including Doctor Who action figure reviews. Please leave a like, and I shall see you very soon for more Doctor Who action figure reviews. Take care. See you next time.